Hey, what's up guys, Middle 571 here, and today I'm gonna to talk about the Sennheiser HD 600. This is a reference open back headphone uh, designed about 20 years ago, and uh, it's actually been quite a classic when it comes to reference headphones for studio and pro use. So let's talk about the hardware. You actually get a quite a nice box. I'm not gonna unbox anything for you because I'm sure that would bore some people, but uh, here are the headphones themselves. Uh, build quality is, hmm. Build quality on these, I feel like I expected more. I'm not gonna lie. Um, the headband is very plastic feeling. The headphones are pretty light. I mean, that's not a bad thing in terms of comfort, which I'll talk about in a second, uh, but I feel like that these could have felt stronger. Um, I can't knock them too much because, I mean, the adjustments right here are metal, very strong. Uh, it's for the headband itself. It makes a very German sound when <laughs> you adjust the, the headband on the 600 for sure. A very strong feeling, and that's good. Uh, they're also very, very easy to repair. You can take them apart and put them back together very, very quickly. Um, there's a nice video on YouTube uh, where someone does exactly that. So almost no tools required too. The cable is removable. You can pull it and it'll just come right out. It's actually quite a uh, brilliant design in terms of maintainability. But I just feel like that it could have felt stronger. Um, it becomes even more apparent when you look at the cable. Uh, the cable they include is you know, the usual like 12 foot long this is a straight cable and the end terminates like this and this is the quarter inch adapter they give you what 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 is this i i i really don't understand like what <laughs> there's also no threading for it um i mean obviously this is not going to be used as a monitor because it's wide open but this is just odd. Um, you used to pay $3.99 for this can, and you'd get a cable that looks like that on the end. Like, yeah, it's kind of strange. I expected it to be a beefy cable. You know, this kind of feels cheap. I'm sorry, but I have to. I have to mention that. Now, a lot of what you pay for is the sound quality, so don't worry. I'll get to that in a second. Um, so comfort, comfort is actually exceptional, but when you first get the headphones, they will break in a little bit and you have to deal with some extra clamping force. These clamp a little bit harder than both the 701 and uh, definitely harder than the 880 premium. So when you first put them on, they seem clampy. Now that's not that bad because the ear pads are very, very soft. Um, they're quite plush. They're not memory foam, but they're they're soft. And uh, even if your ear somehow was to touch the inside here, these are real deep, by the way. Um, even if it was to touch inside here, there's more foam uh, surrounding where the the driver would be in there. So it's not like raw, like mesh and no like foam. There is even foam in there. So. I have no problem. I can't imagine uh, anyone's ears having any issue with comfort here. You just got to let the headband stretch a little bit as you wear them. And uh, I can wear these pretty much indefinitely after that. But it's worth noting. Headband is uh, pretty comfortable and very soft. Not uh, leather or anything, just soft fabric. All right, now let's talk about the sound. This is where these shine, no question. The bass. The bass on the HD600... Um, I found doesn't really sound like it measures on inner fidelity. Uh, I quite agree with the way Golden Ears measures this headphone uh, in most in most aspects, and uh, I'd say Chang Star's measurements are pretty pretty dead on actually for this one as well. So the bass does roll off a bit um, for sure. It's it's still a dated headphone now. It's more of like a classic this thing. And uh, as a dynamic open back, you're gonna get some you're gonna get some roll off, sure. But I will say the bass is much more present than the 701. Um, I'd say it's probably about as present as a as a Q701 or a DT880. Maybe a little bit more, a little bit more mid bass. So there's definitely some. Uh, this is this is a slight mid bass hump here, and a lot of people have mentioned that. I, I would agree. Uh, and there's definitely some roll off as you go down, but uh, I feel like Dig is pretty deep for an open back and uh, has a, a very just mostly uncolored bass other than the slight mid bass hump, so it's it's quite good. Um, smooth again, fast. No, no, not really any problems there. Um, maybe 
maybe not quite as refined as uh, some headphones that are open back, especially of much higher price. So I will say for the money, it's a very good value. And we're only talking about the base so far, and I still think it's a good value. All right, now the mid-range. The mid-range in this headphone is what I would say, for the most part, probably the most uncolored that I've heard, even more so than the HD 800, actually. Um, it's really, really flat. It has almost no character of its own to it, except it is a little bit forward. Um, the timber is exactly right, but I will say that the, the, um, the amount of energy is a little bit above neutral. Uh, if you listen to some metal with this and you really you really crank the volume, you can hear that guitars are a little bit more forward than they should be. Um, it, we're talking like maybe 2 or 3 dB higher than what it probably should sound like, um, which is one reason why I thought the HD 800 sounded a little bit recessed. Um, it does sound slightly recessed. This sounds just a little bit forward, um, but it's nothing bad because it's still fast. It sounds very fast, pretty detailed. Um, and uh, quite, quite good. It kind of gives you a blank stare overall, the whole sound of this thing anyway. All right, the treble. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful HD 600 treble. The treble on this headphone is incredibly non-fatiguing. It's very well extended and it does not have a sibilance peak in the low treble. It is the opposite of dry. If there ever was such thing as maybe a slightly warm treble. This would be it. Some people feel that the treble is a little bit rolled off. Um, yeah. Um, but not, I wouldn't use the words rolled off, actually. I would say that the treble is a little bit recessed. Just a little. I mean, like, if there was a low treble peak that I would add to this, it wouldn't be more than maybe one or two more dB of energy, or it would just be a little bit too much. But it kind of sounds like um, there's that mid-range, slight bump, and then as we go into the treble, um, there's a slight recession in the low treble, and then it comes back up and just keeps going from there. That's kind of what I hear, and uh, the extension is excellent. Like, these sound really airy um, and open, and just the treble is so natural that it's just, it's wonderful. It's beautiful. It just sounds great. Like, I can't imagine anyone actually hating this headphone um, or knocking it for it being too dark, and definitely not knocking it for being too bright. Um, it's it's a really carefully um, it seems like the the sound was really carefully engineered to be very very natural, and that is the overall word I would describe it as. It kind of gives you a blank stare with a very very uncolored response. It's one of the most neutral headphones I've ever heard. Um, and today, I think it's still the most neutral, more than the 800, absolutely more than the 800, uh, because the treble isn't dry at all. It's very, very natural, very smooth, and uh, very extended at the same time. Now, the sound stage on these is um, better than I remembered. I actually heard this headphone a couple years ago before I decided to buy it for myself, and uh, I was blown away at the time, but I never really... Uh, tried to explore the soundstage very much. The soundstage of this headphone is, is, is very, very refined. Um, and by that I mean where the DT880 is slightly wide and has excellent imaging, the K701 is super wide at the expense of a center image and it isn't quite as precise about instrument placement. This headphone is the very strict, um, slightly more narrow than the 880 in terms of soundstage width, but the imaging is like like laser precision imaging. Like when a song is supposed to sound wide, it just blows up in width and separates out the tracks around you very, very well. Um, better than a lot of headphones I've heard uh, for sure in terms of that imaging, but uh, it, it doesn't give you anything exciting unless the song really implies that. Uh, and I like that. It's an accurate uh, sound stage, uh, maybe slightly narrow and not as <laughs> exciting as people might enjoy, but I mean, this is a reference headphone, and I think it does the best job. Um, the upshot is it does the best job at being a reference open headphone of uh, the Mid-Fi Trio. I still think that. Uh, it's amazing that I tried so many, so many, so many headphones and I still came back to the HD 600 after I first heard it. This is a wonderful, 
neutral, natural sounding headphone uh, that's just been around for so long and doesn't need to change. Um, in my opinion, this right here is Sennheiser's finest headphone. I've heard the 650, the 800, and uh, this guy, and a bunch of the 5XX series. I had a 439 at one point, 201, 202, or the 203 before. Uh, I had a 280 Pro. So, like, I've heard a lot of Sennheisers, and this is just the, the cream of the crop. I really like this better than the 800. The 800's faster. Um, the 800's got a wider soundstage, even better imaging. Uh, but it sounds artificial, dry, and, like, just not quite, quite flat. I'm sorry. This is the headphone you want to buy if you want to hear what was recorded. This is the closest thing i found to getting exactly that. And it actually... Would I would say that the Sennheiser HD 600 is probably if you were to if I could start all over again in this hobby and choose an open headphone to start with, this would be it. I simply would say get yourself a shit Maggi 2 Modi 2, um, the HD 600, pony up that uh, some odd 400 500 dollars and go with that for a while, and that may be the only setup you could ever need. But it gives you a good reference point uh, for buying other headphones, and that's what I think is really special about this one. Uh, it's the headphone that I compare everything else to in terms of tonal balance. That's what I. That's really why I own this, and why I will never plan on selling one of these things. They are uh, just a wonderful tool, but also something you just put on and you just you can fall asleep with this thing because it just gives you what's there. It gives you a blank stare. It's a plus. And it's a minus because it gives you what's there, but it also doesn't add anything special. Um, after I realized how neutral this headphone sounded, I also had kind of an awakening of, man, I've been a neutral head for too long and I need to try to go back to coloration and uh, explore some more of that. Um, so that's what I've done. But this right here, if there's one reference headphone I would pick that you can start your headphone collection off with, or if you want to hear what was recorded, if that was something that you've always wanted to hear like I was when I started this hobby, this right here is the headphone to buy, period. Thanks, guys. Hope uh, this helps, and uh, stay tuned for more reviews as always. Take care.